Uh, okay, so let's have some uh, discussion. So we'll take some questions. Yes. Uh, in your discussion, uh, when you discuss the early Soviet period, I think those of us who deal with Ukraine remember that the Bolsheviks were driven out of Ukraine twice by, in 1918-1920, uh, by armies in which peasants were the majority, and that Stalin remembered this. So I wonder to what degree the fact that the overwhelming number of peasants in China were Han Chinese, and perhaps even a majority of the peasants in the Soviet Union were not Russian, uh, and that the peasant problem or peasant issue was associated in the mind of Stalin with the national issue plays a role as well, and wondered whether you would comment on that. I answered directly each yes. question. Yes. Okay. Okay. yes, yes, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I agree with you, of course. This, uh, uh, I felt I was already too long on the, when I retraced the, the relationships of peasant, uh, Russian or Ukrainian peasant with, with the Bolshevik, but of course, this is very important, and this is again a paradox because I define the Chinese revolution as a nationalist revolution, Han, Han nationalist revolution. But of course, the national question was very important issues in Soviet Russia, where the Russian were at times uh, barely a, a majority of the entire population. And as you said, uh, at the time of Zohana, the Ukrainian uh, expelled them out of Ukraine. And while in China, the Han people, the, at the time, in 1949, they were 94% of the Chinese population. Now they are less, because for years, the single China policy has been much less rigorous to our national minorities. So now they are about 91 to 92% of Han Chinese. But still, it's a peripheral, peripheral, peripheral problem. It's very important. It, it was a fundamental one for the, for, for the Russian, and of course Stalin would never forget that, I agree with you. Uh, so, uh, uh, but still, I, I am impressed by, by the, the contrast between the relationship between the two, two kinds of revolutionaries, so-called communist revolutionaries. Yes, <coughs> I think what you just said is confirmed, and I would like you to comment a little bit more on this. Because, of course, when Stalin opened the Second War with the peasantry, also against the Russian peasantry, one has to say, mainly with the, but, but in 1930 it was against peasantry in general, he started with the privatization, that is, with the elimination of the peasant elite. And the peasants reacted to collectivization and the gulagization they didn't want, and naturally denounced this as the end of the revolution and the second serfdom. As far as I understand, and here I would like your comment, in China, not only they had just given the land to the peasant after going to power, the Chinese Congress, but when they invited or they started collectivizing in 1955, they were not thinking of going into war against the peasantry. They never thought of deporting 5% of the richest or strongest peasants. So they didn't have an idea they were starting a war against peasants in general, as the Bolsheviks knew very well they were doing in 1929-30. So really, the difference is quite uh, evident. So if you could comment. Uh, I, I, I think I, I don't need to, com to comment uh, because uh, we completely agree, I agree completely with you, of course. They never have such an idea uh, for the flourishing war against the peasants that, 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 that come to the mind of none of, none of them. Uh, no, no, that, that's true. So uh, I will no, not give any further comment. I, I agree completely with you. It's because the, the opposite. opposite. Uh, 
Um, thank you very much for your presentation. It, it was very interesting, and I just wanted to echo Professor Yixing Wu's comments that um, in grad school we all start our studies with your books, so <laughs> it's an honor to have you at U of T. Um, I wanted to ask, as a historian uh, of the peasantry in modern China, how are you able to um, get to uh, the peasantry's perspective on the famine? Um, which is to say that most of the sources we have are written by uh, party members, intellectuals, uh, especially before the war, I mean basically from, from um, throughout the revolution. And so in your own research and, and uh, in the context of this discussion of famine, how do we as historians um, locate you know, the voice of the peasantry or the subjectivity when all the sources we have come from the party? Yes, we, the official source, but not, not even because it was a, a dictatorship, a communist dictatorship, even before, under any regime, usually, we have uh, written uh, sources, written by intellectuals, never, never directly the voice of the peasants, that's, that's true. Uh, but we, we, we get to, to know, so I'm very, for instance, today, you have you had uh, Ralph Axton who interviewed for years peasants in Dafo village in, Nor in, in the Nor northern Ronan province, and he, 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 he finally heard, heard their voice. And also, uh, you had Josun looking at archives. In those archives, you had fights, for instance, even local cadres, who they, they would, before fighting or brutally fighting against the peasants, they first had a problem. The peasants don't want to do that. The peasants resist. The uh, chairman now told us to do so. And it's impossible because of, uh, the, the, the peasants, very bad cooperation. They would not hear anything of that. And we, we un indirectly uh, learn and also when they would die, there were other, uh, other uh, the testimonies you see about what happened to them. So it's it's really it's much more of course and they just kept speaking and speaking and writing uh, and then and sometimes too much and then based on their, their voice is very uh, sparse. But still it, it's it's not uh, now it's it's becoming no longer a guess or a total mystery. Now we we, we begin to feel that uh, sometimes we, we can advance some, some uh, hypothesis uh, or conclusion, which sometimes are revealed by story. That's, uh, I would not say more. <laughs> Hi. Um, my question is related to the uh, current situation in China. Um, uh, the current, the new uh, generation of leaders led by Xi Jinping uh, is considering easing up on the uh, land policy in rural China. Uh, they're trying to integrate uh, farmers and villagers, uh, people who reside, who have the uh, uh, agricultural hukou status uh, into the urbanization process in China. I'm just wondering, I'm just curious, uh, what do you think about that? whole process, and would that benefit um, the peasants or not? Thank you. Uh, so far, uh, as we know, the current uh, moves by Xi Jinping is not in the countryside that they are m m most visible, you know. We know how this fight about, against corruption, against high-level leaders, uh, which are very, uh, uh, almost all are corrupted. Or we know about this, this stand in international affairs in South uh, Eastern Sea. You know, uh, we we know uh, for, for uh, some experiences in the countryside. We we know so Ralph Hudson uh, when he recalls this this afternoon the fact that the taxes were abolished in 2006. That is simply the most important concerning present uh, event of, of since 2000. Yes, there is nothing. Uh, so coming to Xi Jinping, this is 
no more speech of an historian, but commanding of, of news like a journalist. He is very popular in China now among, among many people as yeah, a strong leader who, you know, who is, uh, uh, he, he does not ride in a taxi, but he, sometimes in the bus, not in a limousine, something like that, just for, and of course, uh, he, he made at least the TV is uh, showing that to so the peasant masses and so on. Uh, I am not myself, I am uh, so that impressed. He, he seems so less gray. Than the, than the, the former one, Hu Jintao, he can, can do some things, but we know that as soon as, if you want really to push to the end his anti-corruption fight, that will be a harsh war and that will make many, many, many uh, communist leaders and, and elites and oligarchs uh, unhappy and, uh, and ready to, to, to resist. And, and, and also, I, I can see him don't see a, a very divergent path now open in the countryside. Of course, uh, there were some, when, when it, it, it said that, for instance, uh, they will open more, uh, a bigger role for the market, of course, uh, the peasant welcome that, when the price will be, will be less controlled, more free market, they, they, they will support such move. I don't see if you have something more precise in mind, which does not come to my mind. No? 